Hey everybody, Charles here from O'Reilly Auto Parts to show you how to change the rear shocks on a 2008 to 2012 Ford Escape. Before I get into that, take a second to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any of our new content. Today I'll be working on this 2008 Escape XLT and procedures will be similar for this model from 2008 to 2012, but be sure to know the specifics for your vehicle before getting started. If you're not completely comfortable doing this yourself, we'd be happy to recommend a professional technician in your area. Once you've got your supplies together, here's what you'll do. Park on a level surface. Open the back hatch and remove the rear scuff plate by starting at one end, lifting up on it gently from one side to the other to disengage the tabs. Then set it aside. Take out the carpet from the back then pull the release for the back seats and lean them forward. You'll be able to access the first tab of the quarter panel from inside the back door. Lift up on the scuff plate to disengage this retainer. Go back to the rear of the vehicle inside the hatch and use your hands and a trim tool if needed to begin disengaging the rear quarter panel from the body of the vehicle on the side where you'll be working first. Once the tabs are disengaged, you should be able to remove the panel. Under the vehicle, use a 15 16 socket and breaker bar to remove the bottom nut securing the shock. It's okay to take the nut and washer off, but leave the bottom of the shock in place on the bolt. Back at the top of the shock, use a pair of locking pliers to secure the stud and a wrench or ratcheting box wrench to loosen the nut. Take off the nut and bushing. It's now safe to slip the bottom of the shock off the bolt and remove it from under the vehicle. Use a brake cleaner on a rag to clean the bolt, nut, and washer that secure the bottom of the shock and the mounting surface at the top. Set the old shock next to your new shock to make sure you have the right replacement. There may be a slight difference in length due to different types of internal rebound bumpers or support springs, but it won't affect performance. Before installation, it's a good idea to prime the shock absorber by fully compressing and letting it extend on its own four to five times. This will ensure that the gas and oil are in the proper position inside the shock and can help prevent unwanted noise when you start driving with the new shocks in place. Be sure to have the shock upright with the dust boot or metal shield at the top when priming and when installing. Slide on the washer and bushings at the top of the shock. Move it up into place through the opening in the body and compress it slightly to slip it onto the bolt at the bottom. Put on the washer and the nut and finger tighten it. Back at the top of the shock, put the bushing and nut in place. Use your locking pliers and wrench or ratcheting box wrench to tighten the nut while keeping the shock from spinning. Once it's snug, use your torque wrench to tighten the nut to 30 foot-pounds. Back under the vehicle, we can tighten the nut at the bottom of the shock to 129 foot-pounds. Be sure the weight of the vehicle is on the suspension when you torque them. Now that the shock is installed, position the quarter panel back against the body of the vehicle and start snapping it back into place. Make sure the weather strip overlaps the trim properly. Except in unusual circumstances, shocks should be changed in pairs, so repeat these steps on the other side. Put the carpet back in. Snap the scuff plate back into place. And again, check the weather strip to make sure it overlaps properly. Push the seats back into place and close the hatch. And that's it. You'll find everything you need for this and other jobs at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or O'ReillyAuto.com. Our DIY videos are designed to help answer questions we get in our stores every day. 
If you found this one helpful, subscribe to our channel to get all the latest. We'll see you again soon.